Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Pedro. I am a full stack software engineer for Twitch and I've been coding in React for the past six years. After coding over 10,000 React components, I was able to learn and gain a lot of valuable insights. And today I'm gonna break down everything that I've learned about React components along the way. This video is for absolutely everyone, whether you're just beginner or you've been working on React for a while, I believe you'll gain some insight by just watching this video. So without further ado, let's dive into it. Let's start off by something very fundamental structure. When you start building React components and they're pretty small, everything seems fine. However, when you start scaling up, it becomes a nightmare. Here's the thing, structure is everything. I've learned that maintaining the same order of how you structure your components throughout your entire project becomes extremely valuable in the long run. For example, this React component is objectively better and more well structured than this one. Now things get a little bit more opinionated when we compare, for example, this component compared to this one. The reason for it is because there's no concrete answer on how you should structure your components. So whether or not you wanna put the definition of your states before your custom hooks, it really doesn't matter. The only thing that matters in this case is whether or not you're gonna maintain the same pattern throughout your entire project. Throughout the years that I've been working on React, I've had to deal with React components that are massive, way bigger than they are supposed to be. And the only reason in which I was able to actually code and debug in those huge components was because there was some sort of structure and clear order in which things were defined and placed so that I don't need to keep looking for where in my component the things are. For reference, I personally like to structure my components like this. First, I define my states. Then I define any possible refs that I'm going to have. Then I call any hooks that I'm going to call in my application. Then I deal with effects. And finally, I put any logical functions or event handlers that I might need in my component. And obviously, finally, in the end, I will return JSX and finish my component in a good way. Now, this structure is kind of assuming that you won't abstract the logic inside of your component, which is something we're gonna talk later on in the video. However, I think it's a pretty good roadmap if you wanna copy it as well. This might seem like trivial advice. However, trust me, as you continue your journey coding more and more in React, you'll want to structure and have a consistent pattern so you can more easily navigate through your code base. Speaking about scaling up, when I started using custom hooks, it became a game changer for me. Personally, I think that if you're finding yourself dealing with large components that are becoming unmanageable, it's probably time that you pull some of the logic out of the component and put it into a custom hook. I put in the screen here an example of uh, a component in which has a lot of logic inside of it. Um, it's a component that does a lot of things. It fetches data. It deals with some sort of state. It does with a lot of things. It's a very standard component that you might see in a React app. Now imagine instead of having this massive component that mixes up the logic part of it and the UI part of it, why not just separate the logic from the UI? Do by doing this, you'll be able to dump down your components and make it easier for not only you debug, find information, but also to test both the logic of your app and the UI of your React component. So whenever I build a React component, I will always make a custom hook that will encapsulate all of the logic that is going to exist inside of that component, as long as obviously the component requires logic. And then what I do is I always know that if I'm looking to find something related to the UI of the component, I can just go to the JSX or TSX file for that specific component. But if I want to deal with something related to logic, I'll just go to the corresponding hook that I created for it. In this example, you see that I can turn this component into a really dumbed down version of it with all of the logic encapsulated into a single hook. In my opinion, this is one of the biggest takeaways I've had from this journey because uh, trust me, building small components is way more maintainable than building large ones. Don't fall into the trap of trying to save time building massive components because soon you'll realize that you're suddenly in a point where you don't even understand what's going on in your component. Not to mention the fact that, that uh, UI tests should be different from logical tests. So if you are able to separate both your UI from your logic, you'll be able to test everything in a much easier way. In my opinion, as a rule of thumb, the dumber your component, the better. Now, if you've been working with React for a while, you've probably read the React entry on their docs talking about the rules of React. I wanted to add this portion to the video because I think a lot of people start writing in React and believe that they can just do anything and not actually follow some of the most fundamental rules of this framework. One of the biggest things I learned is that purity matters. This means that all of your React components and all of your custom hooks 
needs to be pure, meaning that in your render function, there should be no side effects. So if you end up choosing to mutate data or interact directly with the DOM while your application is rendering, you're really setting yourself up for bugs down the line. My recommendation is always follow the rules of React and also the custom hook rules that React establishes so that you're actually utilizing the library as intended. Now that I mentioned the, the rules of custom hooks, Let's get into it because these ones are non-negotiable. First of all, never call hooks inside of loops, conditions, or nested functions. Also, and I see a lot of people making this mistake, always call your hooks at the top level of your component. If you break this rule, this means that React rendering will become completely unpredictable, meaning that you'll have a really hard time debugging your application. Finally, I wanna talk about using a server state manager. Now, I've personally made tutorials in the past for all types of state managers, ranging from Redux to Zustent and even built-in solutions like the Context API. And one of the questions that I've probably been asked the most is, which of them is better. However, here's the thing, there isn't a perfect solution. In the six years that I've been writing React code, I've seen the creation of so many different state managers, it's crazy. It seems like every week a new state manager is created. And what I've seen that happens is that they all try to fix a specific issue that the previous existing state manager has. However, by doing that, they also introduce new problems that they don't address. So other libraries will then further try to solve those problems. So to be neutral here, every state manager actually has issues and has positives to it. I personally don't use Redux, for example, but I don't think it's a bad thing to use Redux if you are really experienced with it. It's not the tools that you have, it's rather how well you can use those tools to build your application. Like I personally used Redux for most of the beginning part of my React journey. After a while, I started using the Context API uh, because Redux was huge when I started, but the thing is, uh, I started to find it really annoying to use and I switched it up. Then I found better solutions. I started using Zustent. Recently, I've been using Jotai. So don't get too attached to the tool, but rather to the concepts that you're introducing to your applications. However, the takeaway I wanted to mention here, it's not related to managing your local state, but rather whenever you have components, you should introduce a manager for the server state of your data. This means that I believe that every React component that is dealing with data should be using tools like React Query, RTK Query, or Apollo Client. When I personally started using React Query instead of just fetching data from inside the use effect, my whole React game changed. These tools are crucial for you to properly deal with fetching, caching, synchronizing, and updating your server data. There's so many ways to improve the performance of your React application, and I believe that a lot of people forget that you can use and leverage the ability of using these tools to make it a lot better. So now, after six years, I kind of cringe whenever I see a React component fetching data inside of a use effect, even though I even do this for tutorials, because I think it's a good way to teach uh, use effect for beginners. However, if you are more advanced, you should be using something like React Query. Now that's basically it. I believe this was all the lessons I've learned on how to write good React components for this past six years. I know that React is a very controversial library. A lot of people either hate it or love it, but not only that, even if you're in the part of the community that loves React, you get a lot of hate for having different opinions inside of it. I've been coding React for the past six years and I don't consider myself an expert. I know a lot of people who are better at front-end engineering and better in React in general than me. And I don't think I'll ever be an actual expert in the library. The reason for that is not only because React is always changing, especially now with the release of React 19, but also because I feel like one of the best things you can do for yourself as a programmer in this industry is constantly be updating your opinions and learning from others. Never get too stuck with, with one specific way of doing things, because then you might close off the door to improving your code quality and improving the performance of your applications. So with all of this in mind, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you wanna see next. Subscribe for a lot more React and other web development tutorials. I'm posting two to three times a week and I would massively appreciate it if you guys could just support my channel. So thank you so much for watching and I see you guys next time.